Uh, so first, just a couple of things. Mm, feedback on the questions or uh, that came up during the last hour. So this graph shows the carbon dioxide concentration. Uh, let's see, so you can see this time scale as well. If we can see it from, yeah, so this is from like 1960 where the first uh, measurement started in Hawaii up until no, this year uh, at different places on Earth. So the highest, the highest one are further north. This is Mauna, Mauna Loa on Hawaii, the one I talked about, and then you have further south. So you can see this clear difference in the, in the interannual variability, which is much stronger the further north you go, because you have this huge difference between the, 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 the seasonal cycles, where you have uh, sequestration of carbon in living biomass and then release as it and so on. And you see, you see some of it still reflects here down, this is really on the South Pole, uh, but, but much more a, a sort of a linear trend. Uh, so, but you can also see that the difference in, in so this fluctuates around the same level that you have here. So you don't see a huge difference in, in, in the concentration in carbon dioxide over the, uh, the atmosphere in different parts. Uh, so that was one thing we talked about. And the other thing, so this on the other hand, uh, shows the methane concentration in parts per million. Uh, and here you see a huge difference uh, between the, uh, well, huge difference. So this is the scale, of course, you can, uh, huge difference in, in colors, but you can always fool people. But so this is from uh, 1.73 parts per million, so 1,730 parts per billion to 1,829. So it's quite a big difference between uh, the southern and northern hemisphere. And that has to do where the sort of mainly where the natural sources and sinks uh, for these gases are. Uh, so much of the methane, natural methane emissions come from the decomposition of organic matter without the access to oxygen. Then you get methane. Uh, and that happens in, in, in peats, for example, and so on. And you, yeah. So you have more of that there in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. And I'll, I'll try to look up the questions that came up during, about the, the ice core measurements and, and, uh, and chemical reactions in those and so on as well. Uh, but I didn't have time for that now. Any other questions that came up during the, the lunch? I hope you all just talked about this <laughs> quite so much. If there are things that come up, you feel free also to email us and, uh, and so on, if you have a question that comes up during your discussion and so on. Um, so this afternoon what we'll do is, is go through some very, very basic natural science concepts that are key to understanding if you want to make these simple models that we're going to do of the, of the uh, greenhouse effect. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a very simple model of the, of the greenhouse effect, the natural greenhouse effect. So what we'll go through is what, what I hope to get you to get with you after this lecture is an understanding of what electric ma uh, radiation, electromagnetic radiation is and how it interacts with matter in different ways. What temperature is actually a measure of. Um, uh, something called black body radiation, we will talk about. Uh, and how the intensity of black body radiation depends on the temperature of an object. Something called Stefan Boltzmann's law, which is very central to, uh, to the greenhouse effect. Uh, we'll talk about the relation between the absorptivity of an object, the, the abil uh, an object's ability to absorb incoming electromagnetic radiation, and its ability to radiate. So send out uh, electromagnetic magnetic radiation. So as I said, these are some, some basic concepts that we need for understanding the natural greenhouse effect. And we'll make a very, very simple model of the greenhouse effect on the blackboard to see how these things fit together. Okay. So at, at any point, if there's something, if I go too fast, uh, then just stop me uh, and I'll try to explain. Uh, but yeah. But also, if you feel like I'm treating you like a ninth grader, then, then <laughs> stop me as well and say, yeah, we, we understand, Martin. Go on. Um, OK. So, so the basic electromagnetic radiation, uh, usually what we call light. Uh, I won't go into the detail because I don't know this very well. But, but what it is, is electromagnetic radiation is, is you can have, you picture it as, as two different fields, an electric field and a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. And these oscillate. 
so it, and propagates through space. So often you you. <coughs> You can sort of picture this as, as something moving through space. You can call it the photon. It's often what you call it. So a light, a light ray. And what it actually is, is, is these radi this magnetic field and an alternating el magnetic and electric field moving through space, moving through vacuum. We're not going to go into the detail of, of, of sort of the physics of this. What, what's important to know here is what you can characterize electromagnetic radiation by its wavelength or its frequency. So the wavelength is the, 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 the distance between two tops or bottoms of these, these waves, right? So you can measure that in meters, for example. Or the frequency, which is the number of times this oscillates goes through one complete cycle per second. And these are related in this way. So the wavelength in meters is equal to the speed of light, which is constant in, in vacuum, in meters per second, divided by the frequency in number of oscillations per second. Everybody fine with that? Yeah. So the characteristics of radiation is, is defined by its wavelength or frequency. And another important thing to know is that the higher the frequency is, so the, sh the shorter the wavelength because the, the speed is, is constant, right? So the faster it goes up and down, the shorter the wavelength, the more energy the radiation holds. So what this radiation does, it, it actually transfer energy. It, it holds energy and transfer that through space. So the reason that we feel the heat of the sun is because you have electromagnetic radiation, light that moves through the space, those millions of kilometers from the sun to earth, and holds energy that is released when we feel it against our skin. Right? So light, what we, visible light that we see, that's one example of, of ele electromagnetic radiation. Can you think of any other examples? Any idea? Microwave. Microwave? Yes. So microwaves. What bounces around in the, the oven you might have used during lunch break? Yeah, that is also electromagnetic radiation. What's the difference between microwave radiation and the, the light that we see? Exactly, it has a different wavelength. It has a longer wavelength. So, but, but the basic physics of the, how it can heat something? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And let me come back to that in a couple of minutes. Uh, and that's one thing we'll look. How, how, so yeah, so how does the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation transfer energy to other, to matter, to objects? And that's, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah, so the basic, the basic physics of the electric generation, uh, the, the microwaves and the, and the light that we see is, is, is just the same. It's these magnetic and electric fields. What differs is the, the wavelength of the, that radiation. So, so microwaves is, is one example. Um, so here you have different, so you have a scale here at the bottom in terms of the wavelength from sort of the size of, 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 of an atom to the size of Mount Everest. Um, and you have the corresponding frequency here. Uh, so the, the shorter the wavelength, as I said, the higher the frequency, right? Uh, so here on the far end, you have something called gamma rays. You have something you might know, which, well, which, which is X-rays. Again, also electromagnetic radiation. You have ultraviolet uh, radiation, which we also get from, from the sun, but m must, m much of that is, uh, is captured at the top of the atmosphere by the ozone, and that we talked about this. So, so uh, and, and this is, the reason this is dangerous to, to biological beings like humans, animals, plants, is that it's much more energetic. It holds more energy. 
So, right, remember, the, 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 the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, the more energy it holds. So it has the ability to sort of break up chemical bonds and so on because of its high energy. That's why it's dangerous. And then we have this, this part of the spectrum that we call visible um, because that's what we see. And there's a reason why we see this light, which will be, become apparent quite soon. I'm not sure. And then on the other side of the visible spectrum, we have what we call the infrared radiation. Uh, so I don't know how many of you have been at the, like, in Sweden where people like to sit outside, but it's still too cold, uh, like in bars and so on, you have these like burners and you can really feel the heat from them, right? That is one example, good example of, of, of uh, infrared radiation. So you can think of infrared, and this is, this is what we'll talk about a lot when we talk about the, the, the greenhouse effect. So this is one example of sort of heat, heat radiation. Or if you heat a, a, a burner on a stove and hold your hand over it, you will feed the heat, right? And that is the radiation. You don't see it because it's just outside of the visible range, but, but it's still electromagnetic radiation. Then you have the microwave, radi microwave here, you have radar, which is in this area around as well, and then you have uh, radio and TV broadcast goes through also, or did at least historically, now it goes through the broadband. Uh, but, but it's also electromagnetic radiation. But with quite, so you see, the wavelength here is, is quite long, it's measured in, in, in meters, and uh, many meters, so it goes really, really long wavelength. Yeah? Is everybody fine with that? Okay, so then we go on to this issue. So how, how does radiation, electromagnetic radiation, interact with, with matter? And there are three main ways in which this happens. Uh, one is called scattering or reflection, which is where the radiation just sort of changes direction. Uh, and we'll not talk so much here about it here because that's not relevant for the, the climate of the Earth. Uh, but for, does anybody know why the sky is blue? So it, it has to do with this, with scattering. So it's a reflection, but the, it's not about the oceans. But what happens, and this will come into this also with the other things, is the way uh, radiation interacts with matter depends on, it, would, it can interact differently depending on the wavelength. So the blue light that comes from the sun, so the, the light from the sun is visible, it has all the colors, right? Uh, and I didn't really show that, but, but if you go back here, that's a good point, I didn't, I didn't think about it. So if we look at the spectrum here, then the blue light has much shorter uh, wavelength, higher frequency, whereas the red light has longer wavelength, uh, smaller frequency. So that's why we call this infrared. It's sort of just outside of the red area. And this is ultraviolet, right? So, so the blue light is easily scattered uh, by the, the, the molecules in, in the atmosphere, nitrogen and oxygen primarily, which means as it comes down, it, it's, it bounces around, whereas the light here goes more, is not scattered so easily, so it goes right through. So that's why the sun sort of looks more yellow, because that, the, that goes directly from the sun like to your eye. Whereas the blue light gets scattered around and comes from all directions, and therefore the sky looks as if it's blue. So we won't really go into the detail about that, but, but then there are two other processes, so absorption and emission which essentially are the same physical process, only working in, 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 in two different directions. And these are essential for explaining the greenhouse effect. So, as I said, the, the, how this interaction occurs depends on the wavelength of the emitted radiation. So what it happens, emission and absorption is, has to do with how the energy in the radiation is taken up, taken up by the, taken up or emitted by the matter. So, as a photon is absorbed, the energy in some way in the photon is transferred to, to an atom or to an electron or something. 
And where that energy ends up depends on the wavelength, the energy, how much energy that, that photon holds. So one important point to keep in mind is sort of the, the first, what is it called, the first law of, it's, uh, uh, I guess it's the first law of thermodynamics, that, that energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be trans uh, transferred from one state to another. So as the energy of the photon is taken is absorbed by an uh, by an atom, it has to become energy in some other form. And energy can come in different forms, but but one way you can have energy is through motion, something that moves really fast, like a, a heavy car speeding along at high speed, has a lot of of, of uh, energy. So one way, so if we look at the microwave, yes, about so how does the, the microwave heat up the, uh, uh, the, uh, the food? Well, what happens is as microwave radiation hits uh, a molecule, and mostly it's, it's uh, water molecules, they will rotate faster. So holding that uh, moving energy, I forget the name of it, kinetic energy it's called. Yeah. Um, so, if a, a molecule or an atom absorbs this microwave radiation, it will start to rotate faster. But then it can slow down and at the same time, again, emit the same amount of radiation as microwave. So microwave tends to, to or will interact by matter through changes in, in rotational energy. The infrared radiation will primarily act interact through changes in vibrational energy. So you have these, so molecules are composed of different atoms. So this is, here is, is oxygen and, and, and carbon, and <coughs> they vibrate. There's, it's not a fixed structure, so it, it vibrates, and that vibration is also kinetic energy. And also, if the, the, the sort of you have a, a, a different charge of these, you will also have some electric energy. So what can happen is if these vibrate very fast, they can slow down and at the same time emit infrared radiation. <laughs> or the other way around, if they absorb, if there's a photon coming here, they will absorb that and start to vibrate faster. And finally, if you look at visible light and even shorter, a, a primary way in which this interacts is through, so this is a, a picture of, of, of an atom. We have a positive charge in, in the middle, a proton. And so this can be a, the, the simplest uh, atom there is, uh, a hydrogen atom, with one proton here, and then <coughs> uh, an electron negatively charged around here. And what happens as this absorbs the energy from, from light is that it moves up one step and goes farther further away. So that it, and that also is energy stored here. And if it releases down again, it will emit a photon again. Will emit that energy. Okay. Does this make sense? <clears throat> so one important thing here to remember is that energy on this basic level, small level, uh, small levels of energy we're talking about is we can say quantitized. It cannot come at any level. So. This electron here, it cannot be, you cannot move it like halfway here. It can either be there or it can be there. Which means that if there's a photon coming here that is not, does not have enough energy to move it all the way there, or has a bit too much, then it's not going to be absorbed. Then it's just going to move through. So the photon must have exactly the right amount of energy to be able to lift this up here. And then, if it moves back again, then it will re-emit the same amount of energy. And the same holds for this. There are sort of different vibrational states that are possible. So it's not a continuum. <clears throat> Which means that different substances, different atoms, different chemical compounds will be sort of um, able to absorb and emit radiation and at different wavelengths of different energy. 
And this is where, and we'll talk more about, the, 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 go into detail around the greenhouse effect tomorrow. And, and, but this is where different greenhouse gases have different strengths because they're good at absorbing emissions at a certain part of the spectrum. We'll look into the detail tomorrow. But this is, is a very important aspect. So if we look at, for example, you, uh, at, at hydrogen, again, the simplest example we have this, you have different levels that uh, the electron in the hydrogen atom can be at. So, and each of these changes from the first level to the second level is associated with, uh, with emission of, of radiation with a certain wavelength. So this is in nanometers. Nano is 10 power to minus nine. So you have this distinct spectrum. This is where, in the visible spectrum, where hydrogen emits radiation, if you like heat it up. And correspondingly, this is the area, if you send visible light through hydrogen gas, this, these, these black bands are where that radiation will be absorbed. The rest will just pass through because it doesn't correspond to these different levels where it actually can absorb or emit radiation. Does that make sense? So, take him just a minute. Sort of sum up for yourself in your head or, or uh, discuss with your neighbor what you just learned about electromagnetic radiation. And then if there are any questions, then let's take them now, okay? So the reason that we use microwaves, uh, mi mi yeah, microwaves in a microwave oven to heat the food is that the sort of, the, 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 the water in the food, the water molecules, are able to um, absorb the, the microwave radiation by changing uh, rotational energy. So they're very good at absorbing this type of, of, of radiation. And therefore, it, 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 yeah, and we'll get to that in a minute. So what does it mean that the food is heating up, well, that the temperature goes up? Well, it actually means that the, the, the molecules are moving faster. Yeah, microwave, what microwave uh, refers to is simply that it is, Ele electromagnetic radiation in a certain part of the spectra. That's, that's what it says. So that's the same regardless of which microwave oven you use, or which technology and so on, how they are generated and whatever. So this is just that it's radiation with a certain wavelength or frequency. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the point is that the, the microwave radiation interacts with water primarily. And therefore, of course, yeah, if you have something that doesn't have so much water, it, it takes, it's hard to heat it up with microwaves. Yeah. If you put something that's completely dry in a microwave oven, uh, I'm not sure whether, I mean, maybe it will interact with some of the other substances, but it will touch, take much longer time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the correspondence here. Where uh, something can, can uh, emit, it can also absorb. Okay. Because it's exactly the same physical process, just working in different directions. Okay. So it's, if you absorb radiation here, you move up to a higher level. Okay. As you move back down again, you emit again the same it's amount. The range is just like the point. It's a point, yeah, yeah. But then, of course, I mean, this is a very simple, this is the simplest possible uh, atom. And already here, you see, you can, yeah, you have the, all these different possible levels. And you can go from 2 to 1, you can go to 3 from 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, but you can also go from 3 to 2 and so on. So, so already here, you have a lot of different combinations, which means there are a number of different sort of specific wavelength that a hydrogen can emit and, and, and radiate from. Of course, if you have, uh, like the atmosphere, we have lots of different compounds that reflect or absorb and emit in, in, in lots of different places, then, then, then you can absorb much more of the, the radiation, uh, for example, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So you see, so 
of course, going from <coughs> from this this first level here to up sort of much higher level to level five here takes more energy, right? Than going from one to two. So moving because so moving this 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 electron here is attracted to this the proton the center of the of, of uh, the positively charged center of the, the the atom so moving out moving it out you have to work against that attraction right that takes energy so and the further out you move it the more energy you need to do that so going from 1 to 5 takes more energy than going from 1 to 2 uh, or the opposite, dropping down from 5 to 1 releases more energy than dropping down from one, 2 to 1. Okay, so which one has the shortest wavelength the, of the radiation method? Well, the higher the energy, the shorter the wavelength, right? So here you have a wavelength of 95 nanometers, and here you have a wavelength of 122 nanometers. So this is more, more energy, right? <laughs> So different levels is the different distance. Yeah, in a sense, or different energy needed to make the change, or release when you make the change. So you see the ones that are up here, the one really, I mean, the difference between four to three, well, then you have a wavelength of, of 18,000 nanometers, uh, or 19,000, so, so much longer, because the difference in energy between these two levels is, is much, much smaller. Yeah. Good, good question. Um, yeah? Uh, is there any uh, reason why level one, level two is uh, higher and then Okay, so now you hopefully have a better understanding of this concept of elect electromagnetic radiation and how it interacts with, with matter. Uh, so then we'll talk a bit about temperature. So, so Temperature is actually a measure of the average energy of, of movement, so kinetic energy, from atoms or, or uh, molecules, vibration and rotation. So this is just an example. So you see all these, if these are, are sort of, let's say it's, it's oxygen and nitrogen molecules in air moving around. And the faster they move around, the more energy they hold and the higher is the temperature of that gas. So usually, uh, uh, most of you are familiar with Celsius, right? Uh, you're measuring temperature in Celsius. There are no, no, no Americans here that work with, with Fahrenheit. Uh, so in physics, you usually work with a different scale, which is called Kelvin. Uh, and the Kelvin, so one Kelvin, it's important to remember, one Kelvin change in different temperature one Kelvin is, is the same as the change in the temperature one Celsius. So the scale is the same, but it starts at different levels. So at, and Kelvin goes down to zero. So zero Kelvin is a state where atoms, molecules are almost completely still. They don't move around at all. So you, ha you don't have any energy in, in terms of movement around or vibration uh, or, or rotation. So that's, that's how low you can get. You can't get below that, right? And that corresponds to around 273, uh, I think, to be uh, even 0.15, if I remember correctly. Degree Celsius equals zero Kelvin. Um, yeah. So the faster molecules move, vibrate, rotate, the more energy it contains and the higher the temperature. So this again then comes to back to what, what happens with the microwave. Microwave, uh, as they change the rotation, increase the rotation energy of the water molecules, the temperature goes up. And that can be then transferred to other molecules in the food that take some of that rotation and energy and, and also start to rotate, rotate faster and so on. So everything heats up. Um, so the next concept uh, <coughs> I'm going to talk about is, is black body radiation. So all materials that has a temperature above zero Kelvin, so above this what we call absolute zero, will radiate. Uh, 
And if it can radiate at all possible wavelength, we call it the perfect black body. So the, the hydrogen spectrum you saw is an example of something that's not a perfect black body. It only radiated in certain, uh, at certain given length, uh, wavelengths. So a, a, a black body is something, is something that can radiate at all possible wavelengths if it's a perfect black body. Very, very small, yeah, because energy is, it comes in sort of quantum, but, but still, let's say, all, all those possible. So, so, I mean, if you look at that, it, it, is, it, it is continuous. Uh, so here just are, are a couple of examples of, of some, a couple of things that are pretty close to being black bodies. And that's the sun and the earth. Uh, but you see, so this is, and this is also scaled by, uh, it's divided by, by one million. So it's, it's much, much bigger than, or more intensity than the earth, of course. Uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to why, why they differ. But so good examples of what, what are close to perfect black bodies are charcoal, stove burner, planets, stars, and so on. Uh, that are, are really close because you have all different uh, sort of compounds that can radiate at different levels and therefore they are close to, to black bodies in different parts of the, the spectrum. We'll come back to that. So, but, but the thing is, once the, the main point here is, is, is once you get above zero Kelvin, so molecules, atoms start to move around, start to vibrate, start to rotate, they will sort of start to change moving be, be, between those different states, possible state. And when they do that, they will send out uh, radiation, electromagnetic radiation. So water molecules that start to, 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 to rotate will then maybe shift to rotate a bit slower and then emit some radiation. And then it will absorb uh, some radiation from some other water molecule sent out and it will rotate faster again and then back and forth and so on. So that's why all objects that are above zero Kelvin will emit radiation. How much it radiates will depend on the temperature. So this is where this Stefan Boltzmann's law comes in. So what this says is that the intensity of the radiation will depend on the, this epsilon, which is emissivity. So if epsilon is one, then we have this a perfect black body. It radiates as much as it possibly can. And then we have a constant called Stefan Boltzmann constant, CC, uh, which is 5.67 times 10 to the power to minus 8 watts per meter to per Kelvin. And then you have temperature raised to 4. So the intensity here is, if you look at the units, and this is, an, this is a good thing to remember when, you, when you're working with, with sort of uh, uh, <coughs> with natural science things, if you look at the units, they should be the same on both sides of the uh, of the uh, the equal sign here. So, epsilon is unitless, just zero to one. So it's between zero and one. This sigma, the constant, is in watts per square meters per Kelvin to the power to four. What is what the measure of? Energy. Energy? Power. 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 And what is power? Energy times speed. Energy. Energy per time, exactly. So what, which is the, the, the SI, the common unit for, for power, is one joule per second, and joule is the basic energy. So it's energy per second, or energy per time. Energy So, and then we divide by temperature, and when you here you have need to have the temperature in Kelvin. Otherwise, it's not correct. Um, so what we get have left is watts per square meter. So how much energy does this 
object emit per second and per square meter of area. So as you see, as the temperature goes up, because this is the, the temperature to the power to four, the intensity of the radiation increases quite fast, right? And the other thing that happens is the, that the peak of the black body radiation, where it, the, 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 the wavelength at which it emits the most, uh, <coughs> decreases. So frequency increases. This is called the Wien's, uh, Wien's displacement law. So the, this peak, yeah. this equation is not so important to remember. But as temperature goes up, then the peak radi uh, wavelength becomes shorter. So you get, the, the important thing is you get more high energy radiation from the black body. So we compare, if you take this, so, so the black, the, the distribution of black body radiation always looks like this. But the peak wavelength where, where you emit the most depends on the temperature. So the peak wavelength of the black body radiation from the sun is much, much shorter than the black body radiation from the Earth because the sun is so much hotter, right? So here is black body radiation for objects for a perfect black body that is 3,000 Kelvin, 4,000 Kelvin, 5,000, 6,000 Kelvin, which is basically or close to the temperature of the surface of the, of the sun, where, where you get the sun solar radiation. So you see both the area which reflects here the, 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 the total intensity increases and the wavelength becomes smaller, where you have this peak. And of course, there's no coincidence that we see what we call visible light in the spectrum. Because this is where we get most of the radiation from the sun. Through evolution, we have, of course, adopted our, 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 our eyes so that we are able to see the light that is, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, that, it, that we get most of from the sun. But there are, of course, also, there are uh, <coughs> species that maybe if you're, if you're out more during the night, then you want to be able to actually see the, the infrared light, right? Because that's something that we emit the whole time as humans and other objects. Uh, but it's not visible to us. Okay, so trick or trick question. So, so it seems sort of counterintuitive to call it the black body if it um, the the thing a black body emits at all wavelengths. It's why why don't we call it a, a, a white body instead? So, what was the relation between emissions and absorption? Yeah. Say again? Black yes. So, but so, okay. So something that something that can emit radiation at all wavelengths also can absorb at all wavelengths, right? Because the same process, just working in reverse. So if it can emit at all wavelength, it can also absorb at all wavelength, and therefore you can call it the black body. Or a white. Or a white body. <laughs> Only people won't understand you if you call it the white body. So this is, you can sum this up and, uh, as some, uh, what is this called? This is called in physics, the Kirchhoff's law. So absorptivity equals emissivity. So a perfect black body both absorbs and emits in all wavelengths. So here we have again, uh, this is the spectra for, for, uh, for hydrogen. Uh, and again, you have the same thing. So if you heat up hydrogen, or the black body, or the radiation from hydrogen looks like this. You have radiation at certain parts of the, the spectrum. And if you look at what hydrogen absorbs, it absorbs in exactly the same places. What would happen if this was not the case? What would happen if, if you could construct an object that let's say absorbed emission in a given part of the spectrum really well. 
but didn't emit it. Yeah, in a sense. Like, uh, so if you could have an object here that, that was really good at, at absorbing the infrared radiation that comes from all, of, from all of us and from the room and so on, but didn't re-emit it, it would become warmer, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, great. Then we can use that to run a motor that, that runs on the difference in the temperature between this object and the, the temperature of the rest of the room. It would right? be and then, yeah, exactly. Then you have a per, perpetual mobile. Uh, yeah. What do you call it? Evighetsmaskin in Swedish. Something that goes on and on forever, right? Well, that is not the case. You, don't, you can't construct machines like that. So that's why it's, 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 it has to be like this in a sense. So, uh. That's a good question. So, but that's, that's partly a different thing. So it doesn't say that what a black body does, it, the gravitational force is so strong, so, so not even <laughs> photons, which actually has a mass, that's sort of counterintuitive, but they actually have a mass, cannot escape from that force. But it doesn't really say anything about, so the black hole absorbs everything. It's, uh, it's you know, such compressed matter, so the gravitation is so strong, so it sort of sucks in everything. Uh, but it doesn't say anything that it can't emit radiation, for example. It only says that it won't be able to escape the black hole and reach us. So it can, I mean, it probably can emit. It's probably a black body. Uh, but it, we, we cannot see it because it's pulled back again. But good